In this video, I want to give you a quick introduction to using Mirage with Vue.js. So I've coded up kind of a simple Vue app right here. It's using Vue CLI and Vue Router and everything. And we kind of have these two routes right here. And this is the beginning of a to-do app, but right now, you know, it doesn't really do anything. The to-dos app here is uh, pretty simple so far. Here is where kind of the new to-do uh, placeholder is, the, the input right here. And then the actual to-do list is rendered uh, in this list. So v4 to-do and to-dos. And down here in the actual component file, we can see to-dos is an array. And then here in created, I'm kind of setting uh, the to-dos to be this dummy data. So this is kind of where Mirage comes in. Mirage is all about giving front-end developers the power of a server in their app so they can write real network code in their front ends without having to wait on back end developers or even if they're building the front end before the back end API exists. So I think typically in Vue, uh, if we wanted to, let's say, fetch these to do's from the server, you know, we would start out the to do's empty here. And then in the created hook, what we would do is uh, make, a, make a get request. And so up here I have kind of Axios installed. So this might look something like axios.get and let's say we wanted to fetch uh, API to do's. And then with the response, you know, in here we would kind of uh, set the to do's property. So if I save this and then we come and kind of look at the app, well, we'll see as soon as we load it, we get this uh, error in our promise. And, uh, you know, this is because we're getting a 404. And if we jump over here to the network tab, in fact, we will see that uh, request is just 404 and of course that's because we don't have a server running for that uh, network request. So this is kind of uh, where Mirage would come in. So if we came over to our main JS file, here we can actually import Mirage. And Mirage is just a, a package. Uh, I've already installed it here. It's just an NPM package. So we can uh, import server from Mirage JS server. And what I can do here is say, const server equals new server, just like this. And if we come back to the app, now when we kind of uh, first visit this page, we see that Mirage has given us an error. And so Mirage is, is starting to work already. It's basically going to intercept all the network requests that come out of our view app. So here it says your app tried to get slash API slash to do's, but there is no route defined to handle this request. So the way we can define a route to handle that request is to say server.get api to do's. And uh, here we'll just pass in a function. And in this function, we can return some data. So let's just come over here and grab this data here, our mock data, save that. And now when we jump back to the app, we see that Mirage has given us a 200. And if we pop this open, we can see that uh, it's actually responded with this data. So Mirage is, is a client side server. It's running in the browser, but it's doing all the things a normal server would do. And so now we should be able to jump back to our actual application. And let's go ahead and just log this response and drop a debugger here. And there we can see the response from Axios. You know, it's a real Axios uh, response and it has a data property with the data from our Mirage server. So we should be able to say this dot to do's equals response dot data. And if we save that and come back, now we see kind of the to do's showing up in our UI. So this is kind of cool already because, you know, the view developer is getting to write, you know, real networking code here. And if you notice, even when we kind of refresh, there's a little bit of a delay. And that's because by default, Mirage has kind of a 50 millisecond delay. And this is all kind of customizable as well. So let's say we made timing equal to, you know, a full second. Or, you know, maybe 500 milliseconds. And now our application has kind of some realistic latency. So maybe we want to come back to our to-dos app and we'll define some new data here is loading. And we can start this off to be true. And then in the callback, we can say this dot is loading is false. And then now maybe up here, where we kind of display the application, we could say, you know, loading and, you know, show this v if uh, is loading is true. 
and then the else this div right here. And so now if we save all that, come back and refresh, now we kind of have a little loading screen. And you know, we can make this maybe a light gray, give it some margin and padding. But you know, basically uh, we're already able to start styling this app, you know, as if it were talking to a real server. So now we have kind of a loading state and this is pretty cool. Let's build one more feature of this app just so I can show you Mirage's database. So we're gonna make this new to do form here at work. And so if I were to put in some uh, text here and hit enter, we can see we log out create to do. And that's because this form is calling the create to do method. Uh, we already have a new to do data property here wired up. And then we're just calling this, uh, this method right here. So let's actually create this. So if I were writing against a real API server, again, I might use Axios here to send a post request to slash API slash to do's. And we want to pass in some data here and that will be our new to do. So let's save this, come back. And if we hit test and then enter, we see Mirage is giving us an error again. Your app tried to post slash to do's, but there is no route to find to handle this request. So let's come back. It's telling us we haven't mocked this out yet, but uh, we can do that with a server.post to slash API slash to do's. And again, we'll use a function here. And for now, let's just return kind of an empty object. So now if we try to save this, there we see Mirage is giving us a 201. It's kind of the default status code for post requests. And uh, the response is that empty object. And we can even look at the request data here and see that the request uh, did get all this information. So typically a, a post would respond with that data. And we can do that in Mirage. Uh, these functions here, these route handlers have two parameters. The first is a schema and the second is request. Request is the request object and, and schema is how we access Mirage's data layer, which we'll see in a second. But let's just come here and drop a debugger and take a look at this request object. So I'll just come back and try to create a to-do. And this is one of the biggest benefits of Mirage is that you know it's running in the browser alongside our front-end code so we can just drop debuggers and, and we don't have to worry about a separate process or anything like that. And so here we are in the post handler. And so if we just look at request right here, we can see that this is kind of the fake request that Mirage intercepted and it has a bunch of properties. And the one we want right here is request body. So we should be able to say request.requestBody, and that's, that's a JSON string. So if we JSON.parse that, now we have the payload that Axios sent over. And if we access kind of the data property, we get the to-do data from our view app. So let's come back here and just say new to-do is equal to this value here, and we can respond with the new to-do. And now if we refresh all this and make test two to do, and we look at the response from Mirage, we see that it has the actual data from the server. And so now typically uh, we would want to kind of push this into our client side to do's list here. So let's come here and do that back in our view app. So over here, we can say dot then response and the new to do is equal to response.data. And let's just call this dot to do's dot push new to do. Now when we hit test and we save it, it gets appended to the list. Let's also clear out this form right here. So this dot new to do equals empty object. Refresh, test, and that's getting added to the list. So that seems uh, all right. And you know we can keep adding to-dos here, one fish, two fish, red fish, and blue fish. And you know from the perspective of our view app, uh, this is real networking code that's kind of doing more or less what we expect. The problem is, is that Mirage is just responding with the data from the request and, and we wrote that code ourselves. And so if we were to navigate, let's say to this about page, 
go ahead and clear the console and come back to the home page. Well, our to do's list component is going to be created again, which is going to send off that get request to slash API to do's, and it's going to give us those original three to do's. And so, kind of hard coding responses like this is how a lot of mocking tools work, but it doesn't really give us a realistic environment to develop our view application in. We're not really going to be able to stress the logic like we would if we were talking to a real server. And so kind of Mirage's uh, solution to this is to provide just a lightweight data layer that we can use to more faithfully recreate uh, a real production server. And so let's start by fixing up our first route handler here. So just like below, we can pass in schema as the first argument here. And instead of returning kind of these hard-coded to-dos here, we are going to return schema.db.todos. And the db is Mirage's database, which is really just a simple kind of key value store. And uh, if we just go ahead and save this right now and come take a look, you know, we're still getting that 200, but our response is empty. And that's because our, our database is empty, but we can seed it using server.db.loadData. And uh, here we can just pass in kind of named collections and arrays of objects. So let's just grab uh, these same three objects we were using right here pass them into load data. And so now we're kind of seeding Mirage's database and then returning whatever happens to be in there when uh, our view app makes this request. So if we save this and come back, now we see the loading screen and then we see uh, the database data. And again, we can look here and see kind of all those objects are here. And so now what we want to do is in our post route handler, instead of just kind of returning what was in the response, we actually want to insert this into the DB. And we can do that with schema.db.todos.insert new to do. And this is going to kind of return the new record. So we can just return that, save this, come back. And now if we come and try to create a test record here, we'll see we still have a 201 post. We look at the response. And there we see our new to-do, and we actually see that it also has an ID of four. And we didn't have that before, and that's because uh, this insert method will basically automatically assign an ID to kind of this new record. And so the cool thing about this is now if we were to add one fish, two fish, red fish, and blue fish, and hit enter, you know, each one of these things is, is getting added to the database. Let's clear the log, visit the about page, and come back home. And now uh, all these are still here. And Mirage is responding to this request dynamically using the data in its database. And if I were to come here and kind of refresh the app, we would go back to the initial state. So every time you reload, we always kind of have this clean slate to work with. Now, one thing that's a little awkward about how we built this is uh, if I type in a new to-do and hit enter, I kind of don't get any feedback and that's because we don't move the new item to the end of the list until after the network request comes back. So we can just come back here and, and let's go back to our view app and actually make this UI optimistic. So we kind of want to move this logic uh, right up here before we trigger our post request. So let's grab our new to do and we can just kind of make a copy of this dot new to do here. We'll push it into our list, we'll reset new to do, and then we'll use uh, the data to actually pass this to our backend. Let's save this, come back, refresh. And now if I type in test and hit enter, we kind of have an optimistic UI showing here. But it'd also be good to see if there's a request pending because you know, if Mirage was taking longer, if, if our real server was taking longer, we'd want to let our users know. So maybe we can come up here, we can get rid of this, and we can add maybe a new is saving flag. Set is saving to true. And then in our callback, set is saving to false. And now maybe we can use this kind of up here. We have a to do's app, and um, I'm just going to grab this little SVG cloud and in to-dos right here, we can say V if is saving and we can give this a width of four 
height of four, and we'll make this kind of blue. And so that way, uh, if we save all this, come back, when I create a test, new to do, now we see we have a little icon there, one fish, two fish. And we've kind of been able to make this optimistic UI that still gives us some feedback, red fish, and blue fish. And, um, you know, again, all of this stuff is kind of persisting into Mirage's in-memory database. And so we can navigate around our app and it would behave just like we expect. So this is kind of uh, the focus of Mirage. It's supposed to help front-end developers build real production-ready UIs and not be blocked by their back-end developers and be able to just have full control over their server, put it in any state, an error state, a loading state, uh, different sets of data, whatever they need to make the UIs that they're working on. So that's kind of just the basics of Mirage. And uh, you know we have some conventions with usually how we set these things up. So you can call load data just like this, but we also have kind of a seeds method here where you can move this to just like this. And then we also have kind of a routes method where we usually define our route handlers. And so if you look at the docs, you might see code that looks more like uh, this. But it's really doing the same thing that, that we were doing uh, in this example. So if I save this and come back, we'll see it kind of works just the same. So that's the basics of using Mirage with the View app. Check the description for a link to the repo of this code base and let me know in the comments if you have any questions.